Hello everybody, this is Maximum Donut. Welcome to a another episode of my Dark Souls PvP in-depth series. In this episode, I'll be featuring the Life Hunt Scythe, which has been a common feature of my channel so far. And I'm very excited to bring to you um, my various strategies and an uh, in-depth look into my playstyle today. I'm using my Guilty character, who I've made to try and get into the Book of the Guilty, but it's not going so well so far. But this is a um, a highly optimized Dark Souls PvP build. And I do have 65 poise, so I actually stack quite a lot of poise, and I use the Ring of Favor and Protection as well. I have the Life on Scythe as my main weapon, as well as the Chaos Blade in my offhand. And the next um, about two minutes or so will be um, just clips featuring the um, different moves of the Life Hunt Scythe. And I'll take this time to just discuss a few things that um, I wanted to talk about about the Life Hunt Scythe before the matches actually start. So first of all, the Life Hunt Scythe is a very, very powerful weapon. I've seen it hit uh, players for roughly in the area of seven to eight hundred damage if you can get a good enough counter hit off with the uh, two attack. I pretty much just uh, two hand the weapon all the time and my strategy of attacking is generally to try and get my stamina regeneration as high as possible so I just use the grass crest shield and um, the green blossom in this character. However, in, an, in another build, I did use the Mask of the Child and the Chloranthia Ring as well. And I use mainly untargeted attacks because they are very good at dead angling. The dead angling properties of this weapon are about as good as any other that I've seen so far. And I have sort of developed this playstyle on my own, um, even though there are similar playstyles around. This was one in particular the strategies and everything I um, per perfected or somewhat perfected myself. So I'm quite proud actually to be bringing an in-depth look into this playstyle onto my channel. Okay. Firstly, I'll talk about the basic strategies of this playstyle and this weapon. The after dashing attack or the while dashing attack is a very, very powerful dead angling tool. As such, my playstyle with this weapon is using completely untargeted attacks and trying to come in at various random times in order to get around people shielding and parrying. While two-handing this weapon, the wild dashing attack is much, much better than the one-handed because it propels you forward a little bit and gives you that extra range. But you can sort of try and change things up a little bit because of the wide sweep of the uh, after dashing uh, one-handed attack, but I don't find it nearly as useful. I should just mention briefly what I mean by dead angling. Dead angling um, means attacking a player, or yes, attacking a player while they have their shield up, or maybe even while they're parrying, and still being able to do full damage. And this is because the shielding sort of surface area is in one particular direction. Therefore, if you attack next to a player or behind a player, you will actually wind up damaging them even though they have their shield up. So the basic strategy of, of this character is to do untargeted attacks and build up your running by just running around in circles. You can also try running up against a wall while facing your opponent, which I found to be fairly effective as well. The point of running around in a circle or the point of running into a wall and running all over the place is to make your attack unpredictable. So it'll keep your opponent guessing exactly when you're going to come in for an attack, which makes it very difficult for players to parry you. As such, when I've been using this particular strategy, I've only ever been parried three times. Twice by Emne I say, and also once in this video. In terms of um, one tip that I can give you about dead angling, if you um, are having trouble actually dead angling with this weapon, which you really shouldn't, Try to initiate your uh, wild running attack while you're either right next to the patient, right next to the patient, right next to the person, <laughs> or uh, just slightly, slightly in front of them. So um, a good example actually was on the screen a little bit before, but you want to initiate that attack as soon as you're right next to the person, and that way you wind up quite behind the person when you actually 
uh, land the shot. Even if you don't land the shot with the wild running attack, if you um, do a phantom hit, but phantom hit against them, that's actually of benefit to you as well because it stops that whiff animation and makes you a lot more mobile. Now the first weakness of this weapon that I should mention, and should mention vehemently, <laughs> is if you whiff on an attack, if you come in for an attack and you completely miss your player and you just wind up way way past them that can leave you very very open to being backstabbed and unfortunately that does happen quite a lot particularly with a very mobile rolling player now the main tool that I use to avoid getting backstabbed is the R2 attack the R2 attack is a very very powerful attack and if you do two R2s in succession the second swing is actually very very fast as well and a lot of people don't expect it either so it's a very useful tool in avoiding getting backstabbed because it will turn you around and face them and at the very least you'll get a bit of damage trade off as well so in that one exchange against Jutas before I did about 1200 damage with two shots and then he got the backstab off on me which was uh, in retrospect a poor trade for him um, but obviously uh, in the circumstances there's not really that much you can do about it anyway Another way of avoiding getting backstabbed if you're having an issue with getting backstabbed a lot is to equip one piece of the armor of thorns The armor of thorns does uh, damage when you roll and so it can be used to um, get into those situations um, Get into that animation where you're being backstabbed, but you actually don't take any damage I don't exactly know how that works or if that's a mechanic that was put um, that was purposefully put in the game but anyway it just means that you don't actually take any damage um, at all just by doing maybe two damage or three damage with the um, roll damage of the armor of thorns so the way to do it is pretty simple just um, equip an, a piece of the armor of thorns any piece is fine and when you are just about to get backstabbed roll into them um, it will do some damage, but then that damage will be negated and also the backstab that they're doing to you will also be negated Now I just want to briefly talk about the various attack patterns that you have at your disposal when you're playing with my playstyle So first of all you have the very staple attack, which is using the non-targeted um, after dashing attack now the key to doing that attack well, or to doing this strategy well, is to try and predict where your opponent is going to be. If you can accurately predict where they're going to be, it makes your life a whole lot simpler when trying to dead angle your opponent. So for example there, he was coming in directly towards me for an attack, or for a parry, sorry. And it was very evident that he would continue his trajectory towards me, which would allow me to do an attack which allow me allows me to get just behind him. The second tool that you have at your disposal is the R2 attack. Now you can use it to avoid getting backstabbed or as an adjunct to your initial uh, after rolling attack. Or, sorry not after rolling, after dashing attack. Or you can use it um, to get extra damage, you can run directly at someone and then stop and use the R2 attack. I've actually found that to be fairly effective as well. Or if you um, are confident in predicting where someone is going to be, you can also aim in a certain direction and do the R2 attack pretty much with impunity. Because if you get a phantom hit off, you can do another R2 attack immediately. And also the second R2 attack is generally fast enough that it will uh, um, let you avoid getting backstabbed basically so um, those are things that you can um, think about when used or when considering using the R2 attack and then finally the uh, jumping attack which um, is a, a quite a unique jumping attack um, not a lot of weapons have a, a sweeping jumping attack and um, while the range of the life on scythe isn't as good as the range of say the great scythe it is still a very effective tool, one that you should use or try to use fairly often because it obviously does a beastly amount of damage and in addition it can't be parried. The only thing of course being that it is very easily um, punishable with a 
a backstab. So you can try using the um, the R to attack trick, but actually that is not nearly as effective as it is in some other situations because if you are running directly at someone, you get behind them and um, then you've whiffed. That's not nearly as bad as if you've just jumped slightly forward and you've whiffed because that in, in the second circumstance, the opponent will generally be much closer to you, which will allow them to come in and actually get a backstab a lot easier. So if you're fair, if you're confident that you can get a um, a jumping attack, then you should definitely go for it. But I find the um, the only circumstances I generally go for a jumping attack is if I'm fairly certain that my opponent will come in for a parry, because obviously they can't be parried. So I've talked about some specifics um, of using the life on side. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, briefly a few other things that are important in Dark Souls PvP, but um, these are more general things that are applicable in pretty much all weapons, all playstyles. And um, that's something that I um, personally put a lot of emphasis on because, um, well, I find that a, a lot of players use the same strategy over and over again which um, makes fights not only stagnant, but makes it very predictable. So um, to mix things up with this particular class is quite easy. You just have to choose different timings of attacks, choose different um, sort of angles and modes of attacks. So things like either the uh, wild dashing R1 attack, or you can use the um, R2 attack. Those are simple things. But also uh, switching things up in terms of moving from your two-handed to your one-handed and going for some parries or going from your primary to your secondary main hand weapon and fighting with that for a little while as well um, that I found to be really effective um, it breaks up the the sort of monotony of the fight I, I think I've mentioned that uh, that particular phrase a few times before um, so what I mean by like you know the the monotony of the fight is that you know, if your opponent gets used to you playing in a certain way, they can come up with strategies to counter them. So the way to get around that is to try and always keep them on their toes. Vary up your attack routes, vary up your attack patterns. And the easier, a uh, much easier way to do it, a way to do it without having to think so much, is um, using pyromancies or using... Um, Things like the bow, which uh, P. Peverson and um, a few other players um, who play with, with a style that's similar to Peeves, um, they'll use the bow to either try and lure in parries or um, as a damage output tool. And um, obviously, the benefit of using the bow in that kind of way is that it it, it breaks up the the fight a little bit. It it, it makes your opponent act differently to the way that they have been acting and you know if you've gotten to the red tear stone ring for example you know it, it might be a good thing for for your opponent to start um, behaving in a different way so trying to get your opponent to um, always be on their toes I suppose is a really effective way to take your PvP to the next level and anyway that that's that's sort of my opinion and that might not necessarily be the opinion of uh, all other people, but anyway, I think it's a it's a fairly simple way to to advance your PvP. Just um, just that smidge, I think. Anyway, um, one other thing that you can do with this class in order to stay a little bit unpredictable is um, to use lock on every once in a while. Um, lock on, obviously, if you're just uh, running around like a maniac all the time, your opponent can notice that and capitalize on that. And the way to capitalize on it generally is to just stay right in your face. And because um, this is quite a stamina um, intensive build with a lot of rolling around, a lot of running and things, if they um, choose their attack timing really effectively, they can get you at a time where you don't have much stamina. Um, and they can come in and get free attacks basically. And so when I play with this class, I find myself um, like in certain situations where I don't actually have enough stamina to continuously roll or continuously move. And so there are these just brief moments where I um, am sort of walking around sometimes and that's uh, something that I'll need to uh, work on managing myself. 
And that's actually something that a lot of people need to um, sort of work on, their stamina management, because a lot of people who play this game, their stamina management is very poor. Capitalizing on poor stamina management is a bit of a, it's a bit more of an advanced skill, I think. Um, recognizing when you think that the opponent's stamina bar is very low and coming in for offensives is, um, I know, is, is an element of game awareness that yeah, I think that quite a lot of players lack. So um, I think that I've spoken about pretty much um, everything that I wanted to talk about um, in this video. Um, I've shown you guys um, my armor set and my playstyle, and um, just given you a few tips on how to play in the similar fashion to how I play and uh, how I like to use the life on scythe and and the great scythe. I believe has the same move set. Um, so you know, feel free to use this um, class as your own uh, if you think that. This might be fun for you to try out or whatever. Yeah, just go right ahead. I mean, personally, I really like um, I really like this uh, playstyle. I find it um really fun. And when I started using it, I didn't really take it too seriously. But now that I've um realized that it's a, it is actually a viable playstyle and a viable build. Um, obviously, I've come up with a few more strategies. Um, yeah. So these last few matches are actually losses. Um. I actually played a, a number, like a large number of matches in a row. Oh, actually, no, I played, sorry, I didn't play a large number. I played all of these matches that I featured in this episode in a row. And actually, yeah, so it was quite a good session because I, I pretty much won every match except for these last two. But you'll notice um, these two last, these last two weapons are actually very effective weapons against my, um, against my playstyle. The Claymore, for one, is a very, very effective weapon. Um, I find a lot of the heavier weapons, like the Great Club and the um, the Zweehander even, they're actually very effective against my build because um, it, they are effective. Um, they're effective at hitting with lock-on. So um, I find it actually quite difficult to, to manage those weapon sometimes and so those are the situations where I would switch to the Chaos Blade because the Chaos Blade actually has a, a reasonable advantage over those types of weapons. And then um, this second, uh, this last player uh, uses a spear and a spear is obviously um, very good against this weapon because I obviously don't use a shield um, most of the time. So, um, but then again um, my, my opinion on the spear is that it's ridiculously OP anyway. And there is another example of why I think the spear's are OP, because um, two hits pretty much will poise break just about everybody, which is uh, quite ridiculous considering the, the range of it and the damage output it can potentially do, and the speed of this attack. But anyway, um, thanks for watching guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed my um, in-depth view into the life on Scythe, and uh, stay tuned for more Dark Souls PvP videos. See you guys later.